गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर ट्वेंटी एट एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ ऑफ जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सो लास्ट वीक टू डेज वर ऑफ फर्स्ट वॉज ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ जनवरी बिकॉज ऑफ रिपब्लिक डे सेलिब्रेशन एंड सेकेंड वॉज आवर वीकेंड दैट इज ऑन संडे ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ जनवरी ओके सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट आई फेल्ट दैट सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन आर लेफ्ट आउट बट डेफिनेटली दे आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम यर एग्जाम्स परस्पेक्टिव दैट्स वाई टूडे वील इंक्लूड दिस क्वेश्चन एंड वील बी डूइंग मोर नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन रादर दैन आवर रिविजन पार्ट ओके सो दैट्स वाई फॉर टू डेज मीन्स फॉर टूडे एंड फॉर टूमोरो आई एम एक्सक्लूडिंग द रिविजन पार्ट एंड इन प्लेस ऑफ दैट वी विल कवर मोर नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन सो दैट we do not miss any important news or current affairs okay let's start with our session first question is which two other countries participated in exercise desert night conducted by the indian air force so indian air force conducted exercise desert night with the french air and space force along with the uae air force on 23rd and 24th of january 2024 and this exercise took place over the arabian sea with the indian air force operating from its west coast bases and the uae and the france operating from the al dafra air base so the main focus of this exercise was to improve the synergy and military interactions in the region as well as the indian air forces capabilities okay so which two other countries participated in exercise desert night answer is france and uae you can be asked that which three countries are involved in this exercise answer would be india france and the country uae okay next is where was the 42 days mahamandal festival inaugurated so this festival commenced at the ram mandir in the ayodhya following the pran pratishtha of ram lala and uh, it is started on 24th of january and it is overseen by the ram mandir trustee basically it includes daily kalash puja and worship with 48 arns in different sector so he will be honored in the vaishnav tradition as well where he would receive a rajbhog of assorted sweet and the festival involves a 42 day havan with recitation of various mantras at the shri ram janmabhoomi complex okay simply after remember that 42 days mahamandal festival has been inaugurated recently in ayodhya uttar pradesh now i remember one more news here recently india has supported the country afghanistan in combating the locust menace with 40000 liters of malathion which is an effective and environmentally friendly pesticide so it is sent through iran's chabahar port and this collaborative effort addresses a pressing agricultural concern so malathion proves crucial for locust control and it is being ideal for the afghanistan's arid climate and addressing environmental concerns with the minimal water usage so this timely provision safeguards afghan crops and contributes significantly to the regional food security okay you can be asked that recently india sent 40000 liters of malathion to which country to counter the threat that is posed by the locust so answer would be afghanistan okay next is national girl child day was first initiated in which year here answer would be 2008 national girl child day is celebrated in india on 24th of january every year and this day was started in the year 2008 by the ministry of women and child development and the day aims to raise awareness about the inequalities that girls face in indian society also it advocates for equal opportunities in education healthcare and nutrition and this day commemorates the anniversary of prime minister narendra modi's beti bachao beti padhao scheme where the main goal was to prevent the female forticide and sex determination and also to ensure safe and healthy environment for female children and to provide them with quality education fine so national girl child day was first initiated in the year 2008 and when do we observe this particular day answer is 24th of january the next question is which organization developed the insat 3ds satellite in collaboration with the india meteorological department 
So recently ISRO has completed the crucial test on the INSAT 3DS satellite which is a collaborative effort with the India Meteorological Department. So this is a part of climate observatory satellite series and it aims to enhance the climate services. So this satellite along with the INSAT 3D and the INSAT 3D R already in orbit will be launched using the more advanced geosynchronous launch vehicle that is GSLV F14. Okay. So it would feature cryogenic liquid propellant as well and INSAT 3D R boasts improvement like imaging in the middle infrared band for nighttime cloud and the fog pictures and enhanced accuracy in the sea surface temperature estimation. Okay, so recently ISRO has developed this INSAT 3DS satellite in collaboration with the IMD. Simply you can be asked that INSAT 3DS satellite is associated with which particular country. So answer would be India. Fine. The next question is what is the IUCN status of Agulhas long built lark recently seen in the news? So it is a small uh, passerine bird that is endemic to South Africa and it faces challenges because farming encroaches on its nesting grounds in the country there. So it has adapted to modified herbivore habitats like farmlands but its patchy distribution remains unclear and this species is confined to the Agulhas plains despite being near threatened the lark displays resilience and it survives in the Agulhas arable farmlands from the Holland mountain range to Mosul Bay. Okay. Simply you have to remember that what is the IUCN status of Agulhas long billed lark answer is near threatened. Okay. They are near threatened species. Don't forget that uh, the chief minister of Telangana state was it Mr. Raven Reddy. He has accelerated the welfare scheme implementations uh, especially uh, here we are talking about the group Jyoti scheme. Okay, and it is said to be launched in the month of February. So implementation details reveal that BPL card holders will receive 200 free units of electricity from February month onwards and it would exempt the qualifying households from electricity charges within the threshold. Okay, you can be asked what is the primary objective of Telangana's Guru Jyoti scheme which was seen in the news. So basic objective is to provide 200 units of free electricity to the beneficiaries. Also you can be asked that Guru Jyoti scheme is the initiative of which Indian state answer is Telangana. Next is Fit India Champions podcast series which was seen in the news is launched by which particular ministry. So the Fit India mission is a flagship program of Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports and now they are launching the Fit India Champions podcast series in collaboration with Go key. So it has been started from 27th of January and this series highlights the extraordinary achievements and inspiring stories of Indian sport heroes and the inaugural episode features Sheetal Devi. Who is Sheetal Devi? Can you tell me? So she is an armless archer who won the gold at the 2023 Asian Para Games on her debut. So the podcast aims to showcase and celebrate the accomplishments of remarkable individuals in the field of sport. Okay, so Fit India Champion is associated with Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. Next is Parvat Mala program which was seen in the news comes under which ministry? So here answer is Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. Actually, the government plans to expand the Parvat Mala Pariyojana, which is a national rope waste development program to at least 400 projects in the next five years. So it was launched in the 2022 to 23 union budget and the program aims to ease the congestion in mountainous areas with limited road and the train connectivity. So Ministry of Road Transport and Highways oversees the project with implementation interested to the National Highways Authority logistics management limited which is a hundred percent owned subsidiary of national highways authority of india and last year plans were announced to develop over 250 projects with a ropeway length exceeding 1200 kilometers in the next five years okay so parvat mala program is associated with ministry of road transport and highways now these days election caesar Management system is also in use these days. Can you tell me what is the primary objective of this system? Actually, Election Commission of India 
conducted a virtual training program on the election seizure management system for the Andhra Pradesh officers. So basically, it is a dedicated platform that digitizes the data for intercepted items during elections, including the cash, liquor, precious metal, drugs, etc. Okay, so its features include automated report generation, dashboard analytics, and QR code based receipts for the legal cash transfer. And this system ensures real time information sharing among the enforcement agencies and it promotes seamless coordination and intelligence sharing for the recorded movements and the seizures. Fine. So, what is the primary objective of the election seizure management system? Answer is uh, to digitize the data for intercepted items during the election. Fine. So, these days, this system is in use very much. Next is Recently, Karpuri Thakur was posthumously awarded the Bharat Ratna. He was the former chief minister of which Indian state? So, prominent Gandhian socialist leader and former Bihar chief minister uh, Karpuri Thakur will posthumously receive the Bharat Ratna, which is the India's highest civilian award that was instituted in the year 1954. And this award recognizes exceptional service in any field to any recipient and it is limited to three annually and they receive a certificate with a medal. So usually it is for Indian born citizens, but yes, exceptions are here in the Bharat Ratna awardees like Mother Teresa, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Nelson Mandela. So recommendations come directly from the Prime Minister to the President with no formal requirement and this award per constitutional guidelines cannot be used as a prefix or suffix to the recipient name. Fine. So recently, Karpuri Thakur was posthumously awarded the Bharat Ratna and he was the former Chief Minister of Bihar State. Now these days, Assam is in news because of a temple named as Bata Drava Temple. I hope I am pronouncing it right. It is Bata Drava Temple. So a recent incident saw an Indian politician being barred from visiting this temple. And it is a sacred site in Assam's Nagaon district, also it is known as Purdova Thaan. So this temple complex holds significance for SMEs Vaishnavites as the birthplace of revered saint Sri Manta Sankardev, who founded the first Kirtan Ghar in 1494 uh, AD. And uh, that's why this temple uh, came in use for some reason. You have to only remember that Bata Drava Thaan temple lies in the state of Assam. You can be asked about its location only. Fine. The next question is, recently who became the second Indian man to win a gold medal at the Asian Marathon Championships in 2024? This is Indian marathon runner Man Singh and he secured a historic gold at the 2024 Asian Marathon Championships in Hong Kong. With this, he became the second Indian man to achieve this feat. And uh, he finished with an impressive time of 2 is to 14 is to uh, 19 seconds and he outpaced the runner-up by just 65 seconds. And the first Indian to claim this title was Gopi Thonakal in the year 2017. And his triumph also marked an achievement below the Paris Olympics qualifying mark and it showcases his prowess on the international stage. Fine. So Man Singh became the second Indian man to win a gold medal at the Asian Marathon Championships in 2024. Who was the first one to do so? Answer is Kopi Thunakal in 2017. Next is, where was the 14th All India Police Commando competition organized? So the 14th All India Police Commando competition 2024 began on 22nd of January and it will run till 30th of January. And this competition is being held at the uh, Vishakhapatnam, India and it is being organized by the Andhra Pradesh State Police. So it is considered the top professional competition for the police forces in India and the competition will feature 16 state police teams and 7 teams from the central police agencies with uh, 750 commandos participating or more. So this competition will cover total 5 areas which are these. The first one is navigation, second is a skill test, third is planning and fourth one is presentation and fifth one is physical activity. Okay. Simply you have to remember the venue that the 14th All India Police Commando competition is organized in Vishakha Patna. Apart from it, these days Assam is in news because of one more reason uh, and that reason is the Mimosa plant. So basically Assam grapples with the rising menace of invasive Mimosa plant 
विच इज इंडेंजरिंग इट्स फॉरेस्ट एंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी काजीरंगा नेशनल पार्क दैट लाइज इन असम एज वी नो इट इज अ यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट फेस इज द इन्वेजन एंड इट इम्पैक्ट्स द डाइट ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ Originally, it was introduced by the tea industry for soil enrichment, and mimosa is now threatening the region due to climate and geographical factors. Okay, so that's why it was in news. And you can be asked simply that what is mimosa? That is recently seen in the news. Here, answer is invasive plant, and it is affecting Assam state. Okay. Next is which country is set to become the first to routinely administer the new malaria vaccine, mosquirix, to the children? So this is country Cameroon. It is set to pioneer the routine administration of new malaria vaccine, that is Mosquirix, making it the first country to do so. And in the year 2021, the World Health Organization licensed the Mosquirix for children in the sub-Saharan Africa. Why Africa? Because here 95% of global malaria deaths occur, and it will see over 6 million children vaccinated through 2025 because of Gavi's efforts. And what is Gavi? It is a global health partnership that was uh, established in the year 2000, and basic aim was to provide equal vaccine access to the children in the world's poorest nation. Right? So Cameroon is set to become the first country to routinely administer the new malaria vaccine, that is Mosquirix, to the children there. Next is Mukhya Mantri Gramin Solar Street Light Scheme recently seen in the news is associated with which Indian state? So this scheme is associated with the Bihar state. So despite the launch of Mukhya Mantri Gramin Solar Street Light Scheme in Bihar 18 months ago, over 80% of rural villages are still without any type of solar street light. So Chief Minister Nitish Kumar initiated this scheme in the year 2022 to install uh, more than 1 million solar street lights in total 8000 gram panchayat that would definitely promote green energy he said but however only uh, 1 lakh 6000 and uh, 161 lights have been installed till date and significantly it is falling short of the target as revealed by the official data from the bihar panchayati raj department's digital platform okay so simply mukhyamantri gramin solar street light scheme belongs to bihar state next is when is the national voters day observed every year so the election commission of india marks its 75th year anniversary on 25th of january 2024 and it coincides with the 14th national voters day as well since 2011 nvd is observed annually on 25th of january to raise the electoral awareness and encourage the citizens to participate so this event is celebrated at various levels across the country and it aims to facilitate the voter enrollment particularly among the youth voters and this year what was the theme the theme was nothing like voting i vote for sure okay and this theme basically emphasizes the significance of electoral participation so national voters day is observed every year on 25th of january next is what is the iucn status of wandering albatrosses recently seen in the news so these are the world's largest flying birds with a 3.5 meter wingspan and now it faces extinction due to threats like long line fishing and plastic ingestion so climate change poses an additional risk to their nesting sites in the southern hemisphere and these oceanic nomads spend most of their 60 year life at sea breeding on sub antarctic islands like marion and prince edward so now they are in a vulnerable conservation status and now urgent measures are needed to protect these majestic birds and their unique habitat so the i u c n status of this species is vulnerable okay also these days the world health organization has a word of the disease x what is it it is a potential new pandemic with unknown characteristics which is listed in the who's blueprint since 2018 fine so this hypothetical pathogen belonging to any of 25 virus families lacks known treatments and could be 20 times deadlier than the recent covid virus you can be asked that disease x recently seen in the news is related to what so it is a hypothetical pathogen for future pandemic okay next is what is the name of the first large language model recently introduced by corover.ai in india so corover.ai 
is a key player in the conversational artificial intelligence and they have unveiled Bharat GPT which is India's first large language model and it is designed for 22 Indian languages and Bharat G uh, GPT addresses linguistic diversity challenges as well. So as an indigenous generative AI platform, it seamlessly integrates voice and the text mode. So it offers a unique solution and also it supports voice in total 12 languages and the text in 22 languages. It has been achieved through collaboration with the National Hub of Language Technology, which works under Ministry of Electronics and IT's National Language Translation Mission. Okay, so what is the name of the first LLM? recently introduced by coreover.ai in India, answer is Bharat GPT, that is D option. Also uh, here, uh, let me tell you one more thing. Indian Navy has recently established the VLF, that is very low frequency communication station. Can you tell me what is the purpose? So Indian Navy's primary objective for its very low frequency communication station is to transmit the fleet broadcast and communicate with the ships and the submarines. So VLF radio waves are used to communicate with submarines that are underwater and now Indian Navy has been operating a VLF facility for the last 24 years and the first VLF station was established uh, in Tirunelveli, Tamil Nadu in the year 1990. The Indian Navy is currently building a second VLF station where in the Telangana state and the new station is expected to be completed in the year 2027 okay so basic aim of these VLF communication station is to strengthen the communication capabilities for the naval operation okay next is recently which player secured the first global table tennis title at the WTT feeder courts Christie 2024 this is Indian table tennis player Srija Akula she had uh, secured her first international title at the WFT Feeder Corpus Christi 2024 that took place in Texas, USA. So she has defeated Lily Zhang in the women's singles final with a convincing victory. So definitely it would mark a significant milestone in her career. So Srija Akula has secured the first global table tennis title at the WTT Feeder Corpus Christi 2024. Next is which state is set to launch the world's first melanistic tiger safari? So now Odisha is set to introduce the world's first melanistic tiger safari near the Simlipal Tiger Reserve in Odisha. And it is unique for housing melanistic tigers with distinctive broad black strips and it covers approximately 200 hectares of area and this safari would receive approval from the National Tiger Conservation Authority. Okay, so it is scheduled to open in the month of October and it will host three melanistic tigers and two other big cats from Nandan Kanan Zoological Park in Bhubaneswar and it would contribute to conservation through captive breeding. So Risha is set to launch the world's first melanistic tiger safari. Last question is, recently which IIT hosted the phase three of Yuva Sangam program under Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat? So IIT Guwahati has hosted the phase three of Yuva Sangam program. This program is an initiative under Ministry of Education's Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat program. And the Yuva Sangha initiative aims to strengthen the connections between the country's youth. So during this program, youth are exposed to total five areas. First is Pariyatan, that means tourism. Second is Parampara, means tradition. Third is Pragati, means development. And the fourth one is Parasper Sampark means people to people connect and the last one is Pradyogik that means technology. These are the five P's. Fine. So IIT Guwahati has hosted the third phase of Yuva Sangam program under Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat. Also don't forget that uh, the parliament of Sri Lanka has recently passed a controversial bill to regulate the online content. Okay, this is known as the online safety bill, which aims to address the cyber crimes like child abuse, data theft and online fraud. However, opposition politicians and human rights groups have condemned the bill for restricting the free speech and the bill passed with 1862 vote. Some say that the bill is an attempt to dismantle the few remaining safeguards for the freedom of expression in the country. Others say that the bill was not drafted with the intention of harassing the media or political opponent. 
overall there is a controversy going on in the country Sri Lanka because of this bill. You can be asked that which country's parliament has approved the controversial online safety bill. Answer is the country Sri Lanka. So these are the most important current affairs and the news from today. I hope you have liked the session. We have seen a lot of questions today and the rest of the questions would be covered tomorrow. Now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Venus Hatsana signing off.